right, grade six, our big idea again is to describe patterns in tables and graphs, and this can help us to solve problems and describe the world. Our concept specifically to today, beginning with the end in mind, is to be able to describe the table by telling the rule for the input to the input, the output to the output, and the input to the output. Now we've had some practice with this, but in this case, most of the time, our rule had been given to us, our input to output rule. The difference today is that we are going to have to determine what the input to output rule is. So one of the things you need to know before you begin is that this may not happen the first time. It may not happen the second time. It may mean that you need to try three and four different things. I would like evidence of that. So try something. If it doesn't work, put a little X beside it. Try the next thing. If it doesn't work, put a little X beside it. If Try the next thing. Remember some key things is that if it's getting bigger, there's probably some adding and multiplying. If it's getting smaller, there's probably some subtracting and dividing. So those are good places to start. All right, let's look at some together before you begin on your own and hopefully we'll practice some uh, together and that will give you a better understanding. All right, one of the ways that we can show patterns is by picture. Now, the key things to remember about drawing a picture for a pattern is that it has to increase or change in a predictable manner. So it has to, each time, change in somewhat of a similar way so that you can understand what's happening. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, our table, input to output table, we can see here it goes from one to one. So figure one has one triangle. Okay, now I would renumber this in my seeking to be understood and I would call this figure number because that's really what it's, what it's uh, about. This second number looks like, and let's just confirm, so one triangle here, figure number two has one, two, three, four triangles, figure number three has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven triangles. So this would be the number of triangles. I encourage you to do the same when you are doing your T tables, very clearly label them. Remember, in seeking to be understood, we are as specific and clear as we can possibly be. So. In this table, we can see that the input increases one each time. So input to input to input, one to two to three to four to five, yes, it is increasing one each time. The output is increasing three each time, one to four, four to seven, seven to 10, and so on. Yes, it is increasing three each time. And we can even see that in our picture here, we have one triangle, we've added these three. Then we've added these three. Then we've added these three. And we can see it is predictably each time adding three more triangles, one time facing one direction, the other time facing the opposite direction, and back and forth. Okay, so it is predictable. I could very easily draw the next part of this pattern and know that I know what it should be um, because it is very predictable. So that's what I would have to add. So when you are creating your own drawings, make sure that your pattern is predictable. Now, we want to figure out our input to output rule. How are we getting from one to one, from two to four, from three to seven, and so on? Now, generally speaking, our output rule or output to output rule helps us. So we know it has to be something with three. It could be a two-step rule, remember. So let's try some things. Okay, so let's, I know it's got something to do with three. I can see that my numbers are getting larger there. I'm gonna try, I'm going to try adding three. So plus three. One plus three is not one. Hmm. Okay, that one doesn't work. Uh, maybe I'll just lightly cross it out, but still leave evidence of what I understood. Okay, well, let's try times three. See, that's why x doesn't work. Seeking to understand that x looks like a multiply. 
Uh, two times three is six, not four. <laughs> Doesn't work. All right, well, maybe it has to be a two-step rule. Let's try times three and then something. Two times three is six. To get to four, I'd have to minus two. All right, uh, that works for that one. Let's try it for three more to be sure. Three times three hmm. minus two. I should maybe erase instead of writing over top of that. I can't erase that. Sorry. Uh, let's put it down here. Three times three is nine minus two equals seven. Oh, yep, that works. Tried that one already. That works. Four times three is 12, minus two is 10. Yes, that works. Five times three is 15, minus two is 13. Yes, that works. That would be my input to output rule. So if I were asked to communicate my input to output rule, I would say input times three minus two equals output. All right, so we can use pattern, oops, we can use pattern rules to describe the relationship between the two columns of the table, uh, usually called the input and the output, but sometimes we might make it more specific if we know what the information is. Here, we want to figure out what our two operation input output machine is. So we know automatically that this is a two step uh, rule. Um, the pattern rule for the output is starting at 1, adding 4 each time. Remember, that can give us a clue. Okay, so what else do we know? Um, 2 to 5, 3 to 9, 4 to 13, it's increasing. So I'm going to start with trying by adding 4. Okay. 1 plus 4 is 1, not 1. Hmm. Okay, that one doesn't work. Uh, let's try multiplying 4. 2 times 4 is 8, not 5. Okay, that doesn't work. Oh, right, remember we wanted it to be a two-step rule. So let's go back and let's try something more. Let's try times 4 and see what we need to do here. 2 times 4 is 8. We would have to subtract 3 to get to 5 here. Um, that one works. Let's try with 4. 3 times 4 is 12. We would have to subtract 3 to get 9. Yes, that works. 4 times 4 is 16 minus 3 is 13. Yep, that works. 5 times 4 is 20 minus 3 is 17. Yes, that works. So that would be our rule. So we would write this as input times 4 minus 3 equals output. And that would be our input to output rule. If we were asked about our input to input rule, we would say it's starting at 1 and adding 1 each time. Our output to output rule would be starting at 1 and adding 4 each time to get our new output. All right. So this is just walking us through the process. And remember, it may not happen the first time or the second time or the third time. You might have to try a number of patterns before you find the one that fits. However, our output rule often gives us our hint. Okay, so looking at the output numbers, we noticed there was something about four. So we decided to multiply by four and then figured out, well, what do we have to do as our second step? to get to our output, which was five. So we looked at five and realized we would have to subtract, we looked at eight, sorry, and to get five, we would have to subtract by three. So we did that, and that became our input to output rule. Check all of the inputs to make sure that you have find the correct number. Remember, you have to check it at least three times. If you haven't done it at least three times, you cannot be certain that that pattern rule does in fact work for all of the numbers given. All right, the nice thing about being able to determine a rule that is an input to output rule or first column to second column rule, depending on what your table says, 
is that you can jump way up to figure out what the answer is. So if we wanted to find out, okay, if my input was 8, what would my output be? Well, we can apply that rule. We can go times 4 minus 3 equals 29. If we were just using the output to output rule of adding 4, we would have to keep adding 4. We had been at 17, we'd have to add 4, add 4, add 4. That isn't as effective. That can take a long time. That's the benefit of being able to find an input to output rule is we can jump right to another number. Say I wanted to jump to, to uh, 12. No problem. 12 times 4 minus 3. 12 times 4 is 48 minus 3 is 45. Now, to confirm this, we could extend our table. So I'm going to just extend it over here because I don't want to write over top of my own numbers here. Okay, so 29 plus 4 would be 33 uh, plus another 4 would be 37 plus another 4 would be 41, and that would be 8, so this is 9, this is 10, this is 11, Ugh. and then 12 being the number we want, plus 4 would be 45. So yes, it does work, but that is more um, time consuming, and as a result, not as effective as a strategy to use. It is more effective to find the input to output rule. All right, and now you are going to practice. Uh, we aren't going to practice with all of them. We are only going to practice with A and B. Let's try A and B. Now remember, there's a number of things we need to do. Um, identify the number in the operation machine, so that would be the input to output rule. Write the next four input and output numbers. Um, and write the pattern rule that is the input to output. So first of all, figure it out and extend the patterns on your paper. Go ahead and do that with your group right now. All right, so let's take a look at A, 1A. We want to figure out our input to output rule. For, so from 1 to 7, 2 to 14, okay, so it's definitely increasing. I'm going to start with either um, adding or multiplying. I'm going to start with adding. Let's try adding 7. 1 to 7. No, we'd have to add 7. 2 plus 7 is 9. Oh, okay, so that one doesn't work. Uh, let's try times 7 then. 1 times 7 is 7. Yep, works. 2 times 7 is 14. Yep, works. 3 times 7 is 21. Yep, works. 4 times 7 is 28. Perfect, I found my pattern rule. Okay, so now I need to extend my table. Just going to move this over here. So we had minus 7, or sorry, adding 7, which didn't work, and then we had timesing 7, which did work. So if we extended it, 5, 6, 7, 8, we needed our next four numbers. 5 times 7 would be 35, 6 times 7 would be 42, 7 times 7 would be 49. And remember, with this unit, you can use your calculator throughout the entire unit. You just need to make sure you're showing your work. And 8 times 7 would be 56. And our rule would be the input times 7 equals the output. Perfect. Now what about B? 1B. Let's see. Um, looks like it's getting smaller. To get from 50 to 39, well, I'm going to subtract here. 50 minus 39 is what? 11. So I would have to subtract 11. Let's try if that works. Minus 11. 50 minus 11 is 38. 49 minus 11 is... Sorry, 50 minus 11 is 39. 49 minus 11 is 38. That works. 48 minus 11 is 37. Oh, found it the first time. Well, isn't that handy? Hmm. 
Um, okay, so now we need to extend our table for the next four numbers. So it would be 46, 45, 44, and 43. 46 minus 11, 35, 45 minus 11, is 34, 44 minus 11 is, oops, 23, ah, 33, sorry. 43 minus 11 is 32. All right, and now we need our input to output rule. So input minus 11 equals output. All right, now you are going to work on your concept practice, your ability to practice creating rules for our t-tables. Page 14 and 15, numbers 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, one of them, number 3, asks you to draw a picture. Remember, it needs to increase in a predictable and regular way. So, for example, if I had this picture, my next one added like this, my next one added like this, my next one added like this, um, and then I added another one on top. I can now determine that's going to be my regular addition. I cannot make it something completely unpredictable. So I could not have, sorry, let me just erase here. Um, I'm going to start with one. My next number is two. Um, my next number is uh, five. And my next number is seven. So I'm going to add two on the top, one on the bottom, and two, one more on the top, and one more on the bottom. It's not becoming a predictable pattern. My next one, I have to add another three, because that's what I am doing each time. Um, so I've got one there, two there, two more there, one here, and one here. Now I have to add another three. Well, now I'm going to add one here, and one here. And I'm going to add another one right there. Yes, I've added three squares each time, but it's not predictable in the way that I'm adding it. The next person who's going to try to draw the next one will have no clue what to do. So it needs to be done in a regular, predictable way. And you are working on being able to tell the rule for the input to the input, the output to the output, and the input to the output. Remember as you work that you try to organize your work in the best way possible, clearly labeling your numbers, uh, clearly writing your work, clearly drawing your pictures, probably grid paper is your best choice so that you can seek to be understood. Remember to ask questions, seeking to understand if you do not understand what you need to be doing. Please, please ask. Good luck. Um, and remember to show all work.